Hi all, I'm excited to share with you today a review of fragrances from Hervé Laurent, founded in 2019 as a niche luxury house. We've had some chats about the concept of luxury in perfumery. You can check out my anti haul video for some of my thoughts on that. Here's what I wanna say about this particular house and why I've chosen to dedicate a video just to reviewing their fragrances. Companies will reach out to you asking if you will dedicate a portion of your video to reviewing their whatever it is. It could be a fragrance, some kind of product, silk pillowcases, there's jewelry, there's gadgets, doohickeys, doodads, all sorts of things that companies want to use your platform to advertise. So I'm gonna pause and just talk for one second about that to acknowledge that in many ways, creators, when they choose to accept products from companies, what they're doing is providing free PR for those companies. That's how that goes. There's no reason that creators should not accept those products if they're interested in them. And I have no issue with creators advertising products on their videos. Certainly that is what we're doing. Whether or not a company gave me something for free, I'm sharing with you my thoughts about it. And if those thoughts are positive in some form or fashion, that may be influencing you to think about purchasing it. I don't get anything from someone purchasing a product and neither do any of the other creators unless they have some sort of commission program set up. Here's what I appreciate about Hervé Laurent and the way that I was approached. The email was very simple. It was, we would love to send you some fragrances for your enjoyment, period. There are a lot of times that a company will reach out and say, we'd love to send you a product if you will spend the first you know, 10 minutes of your video talking about thus and such. I appreciate that the company just reached out and said, we just wanna send you something, enjoy it. There was no ask at all to review, to create a video, nothing of that nature. Because it was done in such a classy way, I'm more than happy to share my thoughts on this house. Thank you to my friends at Hervé Laurent for the generous package. Uh, and letting me decide what I would like to do with them, if anything at all. I appreciate that. Let's get into the fragrances. There are 12 samples and then one full-size bottle. I'll start with the samples. Like I said, a bit of background about the house. They were founded in 2019 as a niche luxury fragrance house. If you check out their website, you'll see what their whole aesthetic is about. It reminds me a lot of like the 70s and the 80s, big magazine, like Vogue type advertisements with gorgeous women, beautiful couture gowns and clothing, advertising something or other, be it a fragrance or makeup or an experience or whatever. Before we jump into the actual reviews, I will share with you that these are very, very expensive fragrances. The first one that I'm going to talk about, for example, for a hundred mil bottle is $580. Okay, so know that as you're looking at the website, and remember my advice, price typically is more associated with an illusion that's being sold to you. As long as you're aware of that and you're okay with that, feel free to spend your money however you like. I certainly will. So this one is called Flaunt and here is the model. And what I'm getting out of this is a very grapefruity type of smell. There are florals in here. Some of the top notes include red, orange, lilac, white rose. In the heart, you do get some grapefruit, and jasmine and magnolia. In the base, peach, sandalwood, marshmallow. This is a really lovely citrus fragrance that's heavy on that tart grapefruit. If you're into that, that would be, this would be a great choice for you. There's a little bit of sweetness in the background as well. Quite nice. I'll give this a thumbs up if you are a citrus lover and enjoy grapefruit, like a true grapefruit note. I should mention too that all of the fragrances in the Hervé Laurent collection are extrait de parfum concentration. That is important to note. Next up, we're gonna try Lady D'Amour. This is very pleasant, very soft, floral, at the top, it has a bellflower, lemon, apple note. In the middle, what I smell is rose. There's a white rose note, a tea rose, 
and a little bit of mint and in the base gardenia tuberose cedar this is not one that i would consider purchasing it's not my favorite it reminds me a lot of tea rose remember tea rose maybe amped up a little bit more on the florals it is lovely but it's not for me there's something about this that reminds me a lot of like a, a rice note except kind of sharp there's no rice note in here i do get the mint it reminds me very slightly of natsumi from anayaki if you've smelled that something like watery but minty and really light rose it's nice but not for me lady diamor the next one is called zendi and this one is at 100 milliliters 360 dollars for the bottle this one i didn't like at first and as it's settling down i like it a lot more it has a magnolia note in the middle and we know that i sometimes struggle with that it comes across a little bit metallic to me in fact this has uh, vibes like rumer or rumor from lanvan lanvin lanvan lanvon <laughs> at the top vanilla red orange freesia freesia also comes across a little bit metallic to me it has grapefruit in the middle jasmine magnolia dry birch this is a nice clean fragrance that is a bit reminiscent also of bottega veneta mixed with that rumor fragrance if i married those two together i might get something like this this is one that I think is going to smell really beautiful in the air as it projects off of someone. Clean, classic, simple lines, nothing fussy or complicated, but elegant. A little bit cold, a little metallic for my taste, but nice. Zendi. This next one is probably going on the Christmas wish list. I really like it a lot. It's called Obscene Unapologetic. <laughs> Look at the uh, advertisement for it that gives you a sense of what you're, you're getting here. What this reminds me of is like La Petite Robe Noir Perfecto, Black Perfecto. Imagine that except more playful with some more girly floral notes in it. This is so interesting. At the top, it's mint, it's apple, it's berry, it's plum, it's cedarwood. It has rose in the middle, amber cinnamon, and it has a leathery base, which is, I think, what's attracting me to this. I love leather. It's leather with some playful notes in it, a very feminine kind of leather. The, the image captures it quite, quite well. It has tonka in it as well. I think this is one that's going on the wish list. Playful yet seductive or seductive yet playful. I'm not sure which one is the leading character there but I like this a lot. Next is Lady Du Jour, and I love the image for this, of this woman that's sort of demure, well put together. What I'm getting from this, and I immediately detected tuberose in here, and some woodiness, like a clean, soft tuberose, a la Alexander McQueen Eau Blanche, with uh, some nice, woody, maybe even slightly leathery undertones to it. That would be great for office, for church, for brunch really nice scent this is not one that i think i would rush to purchase because i have others in my collection that smell quite a lot like it but if you're in the market for a tuberose fragrance with a slightly woody leathery base to it you might be interested in lady du jour a fragrance that smells a little bit like champagne meets a bamboo note is lady mazelle i am not enjoying this <laughs> It's got a bamboo note in the middle, like I said, a lang a lang. At the top, it has orange blossom, apple and cedar, vanilla, tuberose, gardenia in the base, patchouli, musk. There's a lot happening in here and I'm not fond of the way that it's combining. This is not one that I would be interested in purchasing and I would have a hard time recommending this to someone. Here is the model that was chosen for this fragrance. I'm not quite sure that this model aligns with what I'm smelling here. I would imagine someone uh, out on a pond near water lily with almost like a fairy costume on. I'm gonna give this one a thumbs down. The next one, I think I found the right one on the website. There are a bunch from this line, so I hope I uh, have the right one. It's Vergamo and this is called Classic. It is lovely, and this happens to be one of the more affordable ones at 50 mils for $75.
I smell a really lovely light green apple-y kind of fragrance. At the top, it's there's ginger, lemon peel, apple. I'm not reading all the notes, just the ones that I think kind of stand out to me. There's green leaves in the middle, bergamot, elemy. In the base, you get bourbon, which gives it this really nice, sweet, soft, boozy roundness. Oud, sandalwood, musk, and amber. I'm going to tell you right now, and not because of the price, but because I really like it. This is one I would absolutely consider getting. I give this two thumbs up for its softness, its greenness. It's green and yet boozy at the same time, which is an interesting combination. Fresh, light, and fun. Yes, yes, and more yes. Next in the lineup is Trendy. This is a very soft, fruity like slightly fruity, citrusy smell. At the top, there's rose, hyacinth, oak, and the heart in the middle, grapefruit, apple, floral wood. I'm getting a light, soft floral with a little bit of plumminess, a little bit of fruitiness. This is a very sort of pale fragrance, but not in a bad way, just light and pretty. Not one that I would purchase, but one that I would consider gifting. This is um, a yes, but not for me, for someone else. Next, I believe this is pronounced Bouton. I get menthol and oud combined in here with a light citrus and something very soft, like a soft white floral. It's a very familiar smell. There's something about this that reminds me of like Yardley fragrances mixed with a little bit of Aveda Salon, mixed even with like a little bit of Mojito. <laughs> There's something light and fresh about this, a little oody, very inoffensive, lovely fragrance, light. This is not one that I would probably be interested in purchasing. I would love to smell this on someone else. So it's a yes, but not for me. I'm gonna put this next one on the Christmas wish list, although I'm pretty sure no one's gonna buy it for me because it's one of the most exp expensive fragrances. It is called L'Amour Vrai or Vrai and for a 50 mil, it's $1,080. <laughs> so I'm just gonna treasure this little sample as much as possible. I had to double check just to make sure I was looking at US dollars. So Hervé Laurent, I am so very grateful that you have sent me these wonderful samples and bottle. This one is way, way out of my price league. <laughs> it is beautiful though. I, I like this fragrance a lot. This reminds me, do you guys remember when I reviewed the house of Robert Piguet and I talked about the Mademoiselle fragrance opening like a jar of salsa? This kind of has that same thing, like right for a split second as it opens, but then it develops into this super potent, <laughs> quite lovely, deep floral fragrance. At the top, there's vanilla and apple, oak, vetiver in the middle you get rose and jasmine a grapefruit note in the base you never hear of bergamot in the base by the way a lot of the base notes that i'm seeing in this house are ones that you don't typically see in others tea rose gardenia clove tobacco amber sandalwood this is my kind of fragrance a beautiful evening sensual really elegant like Grand Soir meets Loewe meets Seduction. This is luscious, really nice. I can't justify paying over $1,000 for 50 mils. You know how I feel about that, but it's beautiful. If you're in the market for a fragrance like that, I suggest you check this one out. This is lovely. Next is Mademoiselle Rosa, or Rosa. <laughs> This is a lovely light rose fragrance. Very faint, not in your face, very subtle. So this doesn't stand out to me very much. Not this is not one that I would consider purchasing, nor one that I would recommend for rose lovers, unless you like something that's very soft, very demure, very sort of faint and pale. You work in a setting like a hospital or something of that nature where you need to be sensitive to whether other people want to enjoy fragrances or have allergies or anything like that. In that case, I would suggest this one. Otherwise, this is a no I for me. Mademoiselle Amélie. 
I like this one a lot. This is a yes for me. I would definitely consider picking this up. A hundred mil bottle of this is 480. <laughs> Woo, but it's gorgeous. It's really quite nice. It's a citrusy smell, top notes of zesty lime. I would say it's rather zesty. Bergamot, orange. The heart, it has peppery basil, white thyme, white rose. So I do get a little bit of herbaceous touch in the middle there. There's frangipani, gardenia in the base. So it's both floral and herbaceous and a little bit zesty with that citrus at the top. It's light, it's elegant, it's fun. It's simple. I like it a lot. This is a yes for me. Price, not so much, but scent is nice. So the bottle that Hervé Laurent sent to me is called Pink Palace Diamonds Are Forever. The bottle looks like this. It's $360 for 100 mils. This is one that smells really nice in the air. If I put my nose too close, I'm not terribly fond of it. In the middle, you get grapefruit. There's magnolia, peony, spicy mint. In the base, marshmallow, peach, musk. Um, a little bit of woodiness and a little bit of leatheriness and even some sandalwood. So this is an interesting fragrance, not one that I would have chosen to purchase on my own. I'm super grateful for the bottle and not one that I can advise to you if you don't like freesia, lily of the valley, magnolia, scents like that that can come across a little bit metallic to certain noses like mine. That said, it smells quite pleasant in the air and has a clean and fresh vibe to it. Pink Palace, Diamonds Are Forever. Again, to recap, my favorites that I like are Obscene, Unapologetic, Gorgeous, would love to have a bottle of this, Vergamo, the classic version. One I know I'm not gonna spend the money on, but it's beautiful, is L'Amour Vrai or Vray and also Mademoiselle Amélie. Amélie. I would advise <laughs> that you go check out the house online and see what you think of it. And let me know if you have any of these fragrances. And if you like any of them, drop it in the comments so that viewers uh, who are wanting to figure out if they should purchase a bottle or not can get some thoughts from you. Thank you again to Hervé Laurent. Thank you to you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care, friends. What have I done to my nose? Oh, God.